Health care reform may be pronounced dead by June after this week's arguments before the U.S. Supreme Court over whether Americans can be required to get insurance. About 600,000 San Diegans are without medical insurance and up to 46 million Americans. We'll talk about what happens to them if the justices strike down the law. And he was a rock star in the California Republican Party, but this week San Diego mayoral candidate Nathan Fletcher filed for divorce from the GOP. Is it a genuine move or a ploy to get more votes? Joining me to talk about tonight's topics are KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg and KPBS Metro reporter Katie Orr. Kenny, let's start with you. There are 600,000 uninsured people in San Diego County. If health care reform goes away, how do they get care when they get sick? And what happens to them? Who pays for it? Well, we're all paying for it now. If they have Medi-Cal or another publicly subsidized plan, we're all paying for it through our taxes. Um, if health care reform gets thrown out, what happens to them? That's, that's a hell of a question. Uh, Medi-Cal won't go away, so they'll still get care through Medi-Cal or through one of the county's other programs. But I think it's, it's what happens to everybody if they throw health care reform out. That's really the, the, the crux of the issue. In terms of costs? in terms of costs, in terms of benefits. I mean, right now, one of the benefits of health care reform is that uh, you can get free preventive services, a colonoscopy, pap smear, breast exams, uh, so on and so forth. You get free inoculations now if you're a child. So and that's already taken effect, and yes, people so are accessing that. How many? Do you have a sense of that? Well, we don't know yet, but I mean, a lot of people have gotten uh, taken advantage of some of the provisions of health care reform already, and the major ones uh, when we're going to have a health care exchange where people can shop and compare plans and try to get some government subsidies for their health care, that's going to kick in in 2014. So there's a lot of things uh, ready to go. Well, and Kenny, aren't people really supportive of the idea that insurance companies can't reject people with pre-existing conditions, that everyone has to get some kind of health care? Right, and that's, that's in place now thanks to health care reform for children. And that will kick in for adults uh, in 2014, that there'll be no more pre-existing conditions. So are there some benefits that women in particular are really taking advantage of under health care reform? Well, as I mentioned, they get uh, free mammograms now. They get uh, free pap smears, other preventive services that, that, that everybody gets thanks to health care reform. So if you show up to the doctor, you're getting your annual checkup, a lot of those services that you'll get is no cost to you now. Most political pundits seem to think, by the tone of the questions by the Supreme Court justices this week, that this health care law is going to get struck down. What's the alternative if that happens? It depends, first of all, if they strike it down, and it depends how they strike it down. They could uh, reject and declare unconstitutional the individual mandate portion of health care reform and leave the rest of the law intact. Or they could reject the whole thing and tell Congress, you guys have to start over. If they do that, then it's anybody's bet as, as to what happens. Well, Kenny, I guess I don't understand what is different about this mandate. The government tells us to do a whole bunch of things. You know, we have to wear a seatbelt when we ride in the car. We have to have car insurance. We have to go through screening if we want to get on an airplane. Why is making everyone have health insurance different? Well, people that argue against the, the, uh, the law say that requiring somebody to buy a product is, is what makes it different. And they say that's unconstitutional. That's a, it's an unconstitutional expansion of congressional powers to force Americans to buy a particular product. Now, supporters of health care reform and some of the liberal judges would say, well, health care is a different kind of commodity. It's a special commodity that needs special treatment because everybody needs health care at some point in their lives. So why not have everybody have skin in the game and purchase health insurance so we could try to bring down costs? That's the theory. Now, polls show that most Americans think that there should be some type of health care reform, but they are deeply divided on what that should look like. How, what do you think the reaction is going to be if, again, if this is struck down? Well, there's going to be a lot of furor on both sides, no matter what happens, uh, especially this is a presidential year. I mean, people are going to take this to the hilt. Um, I mean, you saw some of the protests at the Supreme Court now. I mean, that's going to be nothing compared to what they're going to do if they throw it out or even if they uphold it. 
So it, it's, I think, I, think it's, I think things are going to go a little bit crazy, actually, depending on what they decide. You've done a pretty amazing job of covering this issue over the years. Uh, you've talked to patients, you've talked to regular people about this, but what has the medical community told you? What are doctors, what are nurses saying about health care reform and what President Obama has gotten past? Well, I think a lot of the doctors I've talked to think uh, things haven't gone far enough, that they were really hoping for a single-payer system that everybody would have insurance, it would be like Medicare for everybody. Well, they couldn't do that politically, so that didn't happen. But I think most of the doctors and providers I've talked to, they're very supportive of it because it expands coverage for people. Uh, we get government subsidies in a couple of years, free preventive care. I mean, that's all for the good.